Oh, uh, come up here and just lay down so it looks like there's a lot of folk here, please. Uh, apologize for not having enough material, but the million and a quarter that the North American cost does not make possible uh, the printing of an adequate number. You want to borrow money off of me? No. <laughs> Tony Phillips. Is Tony Phillips here? Tony Phillips? Need to meet you at the back. A anyone else need to meet him at the back? <laughs> Now, some of you women, you can't be Tony Phillips. Now, why, why are you leaving? <laughs> Seven people are Tony Phillips here tonight. <laughs> they thought this was a seminar on how to get rich before leaving Louisville, but they did. Okay. In about five minutes, I will direct our attention to the study of three areas concerning New Age phenomena. Prior to that, I want to give you some trivial information, which this is an assembly. This whole gathering is generally for that purpose. Trivia. One hundred million Americans, it's dinner time, no precise mathematics. 100 million Americans participate at different levels in New Age. That's almost, now watch it, this is object lesson. One, can you see that far? Out of three persons. And if no one in this group has any connection at any level with New Age thematic material or influence, you violate demographic mathematics. 100 million Americans. Now at this late hour of the day, after all your brain energy, so you can function approximately, maximally about two hours. Six o'clock in the evening is not one of those hours. Okay? So we'll thin this down to practically humming in braille. Now some of you <laughs> will, will think this is a, a Buddhist asherim where you just sit and stare. And most of the flies have been caught during the day, so you won't have to do... Oh, oh one, one other thing. The scientific program, they, they want you to critique the 30 rascals that got these sheets. You don't even have to know who you are. Just fill that in. And if you don't get one, be angry about it and go out and march just before 7.30 and say you're angry because you didn't get to critique anything. Nobody asked you what you thought. And that you had never thought anything before anyway, so you didn't make any difference. The paper that I gave is not too technical for you but it is too technical for six o'clock in the evening because the information that I gave on the yellow, sh yellow sheeted thing was the origin and development of New Age. Now, New Age isn't new at all. New Age is very old. It's only new to Americans who don't know very much. Watch it. These things we'll pursue in about five minutes. We'll look at definitions. What on earth are we talking about if this is a new thing for you? We'll look at some doctrines of new age and some distinctions. You know, what are we going to do about new age? A hundred million. Now take this session as an issue for the purpose of the church. New age phenomena is the payday of the failure of the church being the church. And we're not even talking about cult groups. See, I'll mention them to get Harry off my back. The fastest growing religious group in the United States in the Mormon. By 2000, there'll be 20,000 with 40,000 missionaries. Why, well, it sounds like the Southern Baptist Convention. The second fastest growing group is the Jehovah's Witnesses. 
But that has nothing to do with a hundred million people in New Age phenomena. Now, if you want a perspective other than all the self-help groups that we have... See, I looked at the... the uh, uh, what do you call that book with all this pseudo-information in about this meeting? You got it. Thank you. I wish I had something to give you, but I don't. <laughs> the program... When I started counting, then people bothered me. See, sometimes I'm really a nice guy, but I insult people to quit, keep them from bothering me. I could be in brain surgery and someone would come up knowing that I want to talk to them. I said, how did you know that? See, and they think I'm mean, but I'm actually not. It's just a protective instrument of getting people that know that I want to talk to them so often off my back. Now, the fastest growing groups in America is not the Restoration Heritage. I want this to be a challenge to the mission of the church rather than information that you may or may not already have about New Age phenomena. Now here's some things in America alone. Most people that you and I know know that some radical changes have occurred. They know that, but they only know that they're smothered or that they need help or that they need therapy. They need shock treatment, don't have the money, the insurance company won't pay. So they labor every day, see young mothers, three children, pregnant, she's on the ceiling by nine o'clock in the morning, calls me to get her off of the ceiling. See, this is the, the ground of new age. Now, in relationship to the theme of this meeting, holiness. Now, no one that I've heard has discussed holiness. I've heard the word, but I haven't heard it discussed. Now, I'm not here to discuss what I haven't heard people discuss. <laughs> but holiness minimally means that God is the measure. New age means that man is the measure. You see, it is an extension of classical humanism. Classical humanism is a dead horse. But new age is assimilated. Like 10 years ago, we could talk about occult themes. But now new age has assimilated the occult theme. So we don't have separate categories in study or elsewhere. You say, well, I, didn't, I don't know what those themes are anyway. I didn't know that you had done that. And in American history, this is limited to America. Now, don't forget, this is about the commission, the purpose of the church, and in new age indirectly. Six percent of the world's population live in the United States. We live in a world that I told you before that increases 90 million persons per year. Most of that increase is not in the United States. Zero growth is two and a half. But you know, how do you have a half a child? Now some of you do, but you see that is a, that is a metaphor. It's like zeros. Zeros don't exist, but I've seen 12 today. I've seen that. I'm sure there's more here, but I have personally observed 12. Now, how does this happen at a given time? How does what happen? Why are millions of people dissatisfied with Christ and the Bible and the church? Now you say, well, where you are, everybody likes it. But see, there aren't very many people where you are, even if you're a member of a large church. See, five-sixths of our brotherhood, that's five out of six, of the 6,200 congregations, Average 50 to 150 members. Now, I didn't say attendance. That's five. Six aren't going to do anything but survive. And then another data item is trivial information. We're 12 years away from the 21st century. 12 years from the 21st century. So if there's not radical revival in the church as you and I know in the next five years, you're not usable for the 21st century. It's just that simple. You're not usable unless you think the church is a hospital to take care of all the sick. When is the church going to be powerful that New Age has meetings about the church? See, I'd be concerned. Now, another battery of trivial information. Los Angeles is the largest single concentration of New Age phenomena in the United States. Now, I would go around and ask the preachers, or the several preachers in the Los Angeles area that I saw today, as far as I know, which is limited, you already know that. I don't know most things. But I don't know of any church taking on the highest concentration of New Age influence in the world in Los Angeles. 
The second highest influence in the United States is San Francisco. But almost everything is weird in San Francisco. <laughs> See, if it's not weird, it's not normal. Normal is abnormal. See, you know that. First and second. Now watch these. Now, then we go to Boulder, Boulder, Denver axis. The third highest concentration of New Age influence in the world, not just in America. Now we're coming down to Sun Valley in retirement cities, Phoenix. That's the fourth highest concentration of New Age in the United States. And the fifth, now please hold it down because I have just a few minutes to, before I get into the stuff. The fifth highest concentration is Los Alamos. Los Alamos has more PhDs per square foot than any place on the earth. I don't know whether you're interested in that information or care about it once I tell you. They have PhDs over PhDs there. But it is the fastest growing new age place in the United States at taxpayer's expense. They fly in gurus so they can meditate at noon, so they can solve highly complex high-speed computer equations for the afternoon lecture. The church in those places doesn't seem to touch it because the Christian faith has become a subjective matter. You know, how does it help me? How does it help me? Now, the theme, New Age, Holiness, now, Holiness in the morning. I'll have a little session at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to talk about holistic health. Not tonight, but tomorrow. One of the most powerful sources of transmission of New Age influence is in holistic health programs in the United States. Just That's just one. It's all the health business. Well, Christians should be healthy just because we're responsible. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Now, why all of this influence at this particular time? Now, keep that in mind if you can. These four periods of radical change have occurred in the United States. It's trivial information, but it isn't. The Puritan Awakening in 1610 to 1640, that's the first spiritual renewal in America. 1610 to 1640. Isn't that exciting? See, it's almost paradise. See? Now, it was preceded by the death in the church. Whenever there's a lot of talk about renewal or revival or need, it's because there's an enormous need. When a culture talks about communication, crisis, it's because there's already a crisis. The Watusis don't have communication specialists because they don't have any problem communicating. Only Americans, only Western people, turn communication over to people who can't communicate because they have PhDs in communication. <laughs> now, the first renewal. Now, what's that have to do with New Age? Now, watch this. The second renewal in America, 1730 to 1760. Now, I'll just ask you. I don't want to have to take a lot of more of my time to ask you to hold the excitement under some kind of normative control. This is called the first great awakening, but it saved America for a generation. You didn't have any outbreak of cults. You didn't have any of these things. When you have an outbreak of non-biblical, non-Christian groups, it's because there's a crisis in the church. You don't need to worry about the 10,000 groups that are New Age groups. You need to worry about what is the condition of the church and the culture that makes that possible. That's the singly most important thing that you could have heard today other than that Jesus saves. See? 1730, now here's information. I want to ask you not to be like Louis XIV. You see, July 14, 1789, Louis wrote down in his diary, nothing happening. By the time he rose the next day, he was in revolution past his head. Now, please don't try to tell me that nothing's happening. It may not be happening where you live, but that may be because nothing at all is happening where you live. Not even revolution. See? 
Now that man was so removed from the world, and the next day he was beheaded, and that was he lost his head over that misunderstanding. Okay. Now then the third period of renewal, now watch this, this is directing toward New Age phenomena. The second awakening, 1800 to 1830. Now you see these are long periods of spiritual power, a revival is when churches aren't split today. Or you could have five straight meetings where you have 80% full, or if you're in a large, you know, brotherhood biggie church, why they want the singing group back and that preacher. My, they're wonderful. Nothing happens, they just have meetings. See, a revival changes the structure of the world, and the world is afraid of the church instead of the church being afraid of the world. So there's a lot of things in the hopper before we ever get to the things that you thought you ought to hear tonight. Now the third, the third period of awakening, 1890 to 1920. See? Now the fourth and largest revolution awakening in American history, you've already guessed it, 1950 to the 1980s and the very heart of the radical change is new age is not the church is new age 1950s when you get the Beatles and the drugs and all the business and after it's happened we have meetings about it see generally not everybody but many people you and I know are like the cow's tail they're always behind See, they only know after it. I'm calling you and the churches to be on the cutting edge. Twelve more years for the 21st century. And if you think the world is tough now, you haven't a chance of surviving in the megatrain, megatronic world of the 21st century. Vision alone, but vision grounded in the Word of God. And you and I can't study even all the verses in the Bible. The Bible's not magic. It's not an ominous to hold off Satan and his power. Only when the church is filled with that word. And you can't get filled in three or four days wandering around semi-comatose on concrete floors staring at the walls and wondering why we're not dealing with this. See, it's much more serious. See, you do not need, you do not need to be a chemist to know the chemistry of oxidation. You can breathe without that information. But if you have lung trouble, someone better understand what the problems are. But you can go ahead and breathing without asking any questions about the molecular chemical structure of breathing. And you don't have to know anything at all about the chemical structure of cancer virus unless you or someone you love have it. And then you go to someone who knows. The church better get, better get to those who know while there's still any time. And there's very few who know. Very few. So the greatest outbreak in the history, the history of the church, 1950 to our time. The great 100 million. Now if that's not enough to concern you and the 10,000 that aren't here, nothing will. Because most people, not yourselves, but most people go to where they hurt. But see, private interest groups in or out of the church merely fragment the church. Some of us have heard that we got to, the schools have become specialized. You do this and you do that. Well, we're fragmented over that now. Why would I perpetrate fragmentation? The church must have a vision from the Word of God to deal with all forces in the world. You don't start schools to do this and do that and do something else. You start them that give people the knowledge to order. See, disorder is what we experience. We don't need more disorder. We need order. And order is available only to those who can manage larger and larger segments of information. Not those who manage smaller and smaller segments. We're practically ready. Some of you said, when, when's it go? is it over, Joanne? No. No. We're going to get to these things. Put down in case you say, well, I didn't get anything tonight. We're going to talk about definitions and doctrines and distinctions. New age in just a little while. We talked about uh, the centers in the United States. Now, Louisville. Louisville is not a revolutionary community. See? Neither is Louisiana, nor Mississippi, nor Alabama, nor North Dakota, nor South Dakota, nor Montana. These are not where the hotbed of revolutionary forces are. And you ought to have some reason for knowing why that's the case. Now, let me give you this information, then we'll just start right in. And if you can't stay till I'm done, I'll understand. I understand that completely. Let me show you a source, a source of New Age phenomena 
in our world. A very dear friend of mine and God's, our beloved Steve, my wife and I and Steve go to the show two or three times a year, all at once. We've gone through three of these rascals this year. Cinema is mindless enough. I don't want to advance mindlessness any more than I just have to. See? Now, Star Trek V, I'm not even asking if, if, you, if you've done that. Here are some of the New Age themes in Star Trek. The feeling business versus thinking. You see, the whole of education wants us left hemisphere, right hemisphere is analytic, but see, that's, that's too cerebral. See, we can tell that from the preaching we clap at. See, some people at this meeting would clap at a hanging. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't like that guy anyway. Now, if you haven't seen it, fine, I'm, I'm glad you haven't, but we have to find out what's going on some way. In Star Trek V, it starts out with a little ditty. If you're old enough, you know, life is but a dream and a very simple uh, southern Indiana or Kentucky musical instrument. Very simple. But right in the midst of that was highly complex, high technology. See? High technology. Life is but a dream, then God is equated with power, with energy in it. That's a New Age theme, just like that. See, they're all pantheists. But see, if I were to ask you, do you know the biblical doctrine of God, that's the most important thing you could know because all the New Age themes stem from people take, talking about God, but not in any biblical sense. See, God's the flowers, and he's gooseberries, and he's the sunshine. That isn't my God. See, the reason New Age can make an impact in America is most people are too hazy about God. See, believing in God is not enough. I believe in the Christian God. I don't just believe in God. There's all kinds of gods. Now, here's another. God's in our hearts. Now, I sound like a Southern Baptist or, you know, Calvinistic Christian church preacher. God's in our hearts. <laughs> now, he may be, but see, you want to watch that because a Buddhist can say the same thing. A Hindu can say the same thing. Any New Ager can say the same thing. If God, you have to explain what you mean by that. See, it's highly subjective. Faith has been psychologized in America for the most part. And then another scene, the eight faces of God. I don't suppose all of you people here have been to Evanston, Illinois, to, you know, up there with a the hoi polloi. You have to have money to even be allowed in town. And you can say, well, how, how did I get in? See, I keep all my money in bills. So, and uh, uh, it, I just looked like I had a clean shirt, looked like I had money, and I was in and out before they realized that I was not one of them. <laughs> But up at the Baha'i Temple, there's eight faces of God. See? And those eight faces were in the Star Trek V. And notice what seems to be too heavy for 6.15 at night when you're trying to get something to eat and you're starved to death. You see, repeatedly in Star Trek was, we all believe in God, we just call him different things. But see, in the Bible, men do not name God. God reveals his name. See, God is not nameable. Man does not believe in God because he has a name for God. The God of the Bible is not a God that any religion of the world names, whatever he may be called or it may be called. See, the Bible's completely at variance. In the Bible, naming entails control, both in the Semitic world and the Greco-Roman world. See, God names man. And then he under himself, man names everything he's under control. But man never names God. That seems too heavy intellectually, see. But it's at the heart of New Age. New Age is religious up to here. But it is anti-biblical. And one of the reasons there's so much ingression of New Age is that people don't know what is and what isn't biblical. See? Now another theme. East, East. Hinduism, Buddhism. Now, if you've read American literature, you've read that old ancient thing, east is east and west is west. And now the trains are out of business, so it doesn't play well in town anymore. But you see, they're on the same track. The greatest influence, the greatest influence in the history of the world in the west is the east. What's that? That's all about the things we get to sometime. But you have to go to school. You can't become a brain surgeon 
you know, just at a six o'clock lunch and talk. Now, New Age, East West, and here says in this show, we've got to be at one with the rock, and with the horse, and with the starship. We've got to be at one. Well, that's a unity theme. Well, that sounds like Alexander the Camel, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's sheer pantheism. Sheer pantheism. See, we're at one with everything. The flowers, and the grass, and the gooseberries, and the ham sandwiches. Watch it. And then notice this. Complete knowledge in New Age is the absence of pain. Now, see, it's not sin. Some of you have to go. Some of you have already gone. But see, there's no place for sin in New Age. It's all ignorance and pain. You remove ignorance and you remove pain and you've saved people. You've saved them from pain. Well, that's completely at variance with the Bible. Totally at variance with the Bible. Other than that, it's completely harmonizable with it. Now, New Age emphasizes the avoidance of pain, not guilt or sin. We don't want to go to church and be bam bombarded with guilt. You're guilty. Sound like a Southern Baptist, you know, hellfire and brimstone preacher. Well, that's why people don't know what sin is anymore. They've heard so little about it. They've heard so little about holiness, they think we're a Nazarene group meeting here talking about a word they've never heard us talk about. Well, I've talked about it a long time because in my Bible. I, didn't, I don't need a theme to know that's in the Bible. I'm praying that you don't either. And then you can't die alone. You'll never die alone. See, that's new age. It's like the death and dying movement of the 60s was sheer Hinduism. See, the imminent power of survival of life after death was imminent in all human beings. That's not what my Bible says. I wonder why so many conferences at the North American and so many preachers went into death and dying syndromes. Sheer Hinduism. Sheer Hinduism. Why, they said, I didn't know it. I can't even spell Hindu. I didn't ask you if you could spell it. The influence comes around to always to those people who can't spell things. <laughs> and then the power, the power is within you. That's not what the Bible says, even to Christians. The power, the dwelling power of God. But see, we're not pantheists. God is absolutely transcendent. And one of the themes of New Age is to attain transcendence without reference to the biblical God. Transcendence without reference to the biblical God. These are just themes in this show. See, my mind just clicks like that. We had a list of 27 themes in one show. And if I had the time to see it again, I'm sure we'd have 25 more themes in it. All New Age. And another, he says, we used to feel, but then logic reigns, need to get back to feeling. Does that sound like any churches you've ever heard? We've got to get the spirit. But you want to watch out because every spirit is not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this touchy-touchy business, hot chocolate and popcorn, see, is not the power to zip the church in the 21st century. There'll be 10 billion people in the world at the turn of the 21st century if Jesus tarries. Now, we're not even managing the one we got with 5 billion, and right before your very eyes, the world will double in size. And we'll not be a Narnia, and it'll not be over magic. See? Then the paradox of the Vulcans... Then the paradox of a complex world against the simplicity of life is but a dream. And then the imagery, if you didn't see it, the imagery of the Vulcan's birth, it wasn't sin that causes problem, it was pain that causes death. All of those themes. I wonder, $130 million in two weeks. I wonder how many of those themes sublimely just bypass people's minds. 130 million. Our brotherhood income is 100 million dollars a year. And crystals alone in the United States last year sold 100 million dollars for crystals. The brotherhood income for crystals. You tell me we're not in a crisis, you'll have to talk to somebody else. Don't bother me about that. Now, all of those things have to do... Let me show you two or three things in the little paper that some of you got, and then off, off to bed we go. 
We'll talk about the three things that I promised you that I'd say something about so you'd have something to report to the committee that wants to know if you like this. And I said, well, I'm reporting. I really don't care. It has nothing to do with the truth. But they care, and I don't want to run them up the wall because we don't have the money, see, to have therapy for 100 self-appointed, self-perpetrating committee of 100. We don't have money for that. Now, the little paper that some of you got and some of you didn't get, Confronting the New Age Alternatives to Holiness. Now, biblically, holiness is set by God. Well, if we're not clear about God, then talking about holiness in New Age will turn to wholeness, holistic health. We'll talk about that at 9 in the morning. Holistic health. Everybody be healthy. Why? Because you want to live it up now because you don't want to waste any life. That's not the biblical motivation and in transformation. Here's a book, the only book that I'll mention because the tools to those who care, I've given you the tools. Marilyn Ferguson's book, The Aquarian Conspiracy, is the Bible of the New Age. Marilyn Ferguson, The Aquarian Conspiracy, is the Bible of the New Age. Now, if you mean business, of the 10 or 15 starter books, that's the first one to get. Because she is the interpreter. And order, if you're ordering, order paperback, because a $10 back is expensive. And it's from McGraw-Hill. And one more time, because it's so important. Marilyn Ferguson, The Aquarian Conspiracy. Well, you know where the Aquarian imagery came from in the 50s and 60s, the age of Aquarius. Now, in the age of the 50s and 60s, the age of Aquarius, now watch this, they had turned to astrology to set them free. Well, astrology is fatalistic and totally deterministic. Can you imagine a generation so mindless that they can't tell the difference between being completely determined by the stars and aspiring to be set free? See, a group of people that can't tell that won't listen to me and won't listen to you because they're brain dead. Okay? And if that's severe, it's severe. And it's getting worse. Only the church's revival, renewal of the word of God in the churches, and the purpose of the church restored, see if the church is evangelizing the world, will be winning the millions of people that are going into new age. See, they're really just looking for some kind of power within them because they are not powerful persons. They're losers. Most of the people you and I know are losers. And they want to be winners. They don't want to go through life just at the bottom of the path. I don't blame them because they're in the image of the creator of the universe and new age cannot transform them. A theme I'll just let you work on. Now, if you have that little item, and I'm calling your attention only because some of you have the sheet, turn to page three. We're about ready to start. Page three. Now, some of these things sound technical. You, only I'm technical from 10 to 11.30 in the morning. Never am technical at night. Now, if you mean a technical you've never heard of it, I tell students, and they say, I've never heard of that. I say, why would you tell me that? You haven't heard of most things. Just try to learn all you can. See? If you learn less than you can, you've already had it both with God and me. See? And you need to worry about him. But while I've got you, you need to worry about both of us. Now, page three. Page three. Prior to this period, the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, prior to this period, we in the West have experienced the first scientific revolution. Now you say, what's that about? Well, that shook the Christian worldview. That shook the viewpoint that God created the heavens and the earth. He created time and space. He created man. And the universe has a purpose. Now, it's the biblical view of a creator God that stands in opposition to the pantheism and the panentheism of all New Age expression. That's too technical for some to hear, but the biblical doctrine of a God who created the universe out of nothing sets in 
absolute disjunction with all forms that God is all of us and he's chairs and he's trees and he's flowers. People talk about believing in God, but it's not the biblical God. He is a force. It is a force. Well, that's not the Christian view of God, but most people are bamboozled just because the name God appears. Said, oh, they're religious. My neighbors believe in God. Now, the first scientific revolution, then the industrial revolution. Now, what's that? Well, that removed two things. That removed the intimacy of the family and put the labor force out in the factory. Now, what's that have to do with New Age? Well, progressively, for the last 250 years, the cultural foundations of the greatest outbreak of New Age phenomena in the history of the world has been prepared for. Because prior to that, the family units... See, individually produce saddles and shoes and boots and whatever. Then you move the force out, out away from the family. Then by 19th century, compulsory education removed the family's responsibility for moral instruction and you turn it over to specialists in the school system. And Marilyn Ferguson is honest enough to say the most extensive number of New Agers are in the field of education. Now I'll get to that tomorrow. The most extensive influence of new age theme is in American education. Now whether that bothers you or not, you see there's the family, and the family is not powerful because that's why families come for help. Education, you send your kid to school, and you get new age material. See, you don't even know what you've got. And in media, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow. See? Now we have, a, we have two darling daughters. Joy, our older girl, teaches second grade. Now, several of you want to make notes on these things. <laughs> and she's in community theater. You got it? Okay. The first time the group practiced for Camelot, the graduate students from New York, you know, they brought in big-time producers because this is big time. There's nothing jackleg about this. While they went into yoga. They tiptoed. Now, Joy didn't. Joy just, she's still laughing over it. <laughs> but you see, it's everywhere, and you don't even know it. See, most of the people in, see, Lincoln, Illinois is so conservative. They think Ronald Reagan is a liberal. <laughs> That's right. That's correct. And they believe the Chamber of Commerce and the Farm Bureau are KGB agents. <laughs> That's right. Now, industrial revolution, change. What I'm getting at is change, change, change. You wake up one day and it's all changed and you don't know what to do with the change because no one has helped you follow the reason for the change and you don't know what to do with it. Then we had a hermeneutical change, that is the interpretation of everything. Then we had a linguistic revolution that changed the whole view of language. Now notice, one of the New Age themes is its opposition to thought and to language. And the Bible emphasizes words and thought. Words and thought. The Bible is word-oriented. It is thought-oriented. It is information-oriented. And we are in an information revolution right at this hour. Every two years, recorded information doubles. High-speed computers contain 60 million bytes of information per second of operation. And most people are trying to get to work and back, pay the phone bill and get the $80 Nike shoes for the kids so the little psyches won't be shattered. Now, I'd shatter it from a different location. So. <laughs> Now, don't forget, in the 60s, you remember some of you were that? You remember being bamboozled, spooked by Spock in the 60s? You see, it's been coming just a little bit at a time. Then you come to me. Why didn't you come to me when I could help? Why do you wait, see, till the Titanic has got a rip in her side three we're football? We're being set up at all levels to lose our minds while the Bible is word-oriented, while the Bible is language-oriented, is communication-oriented. Here comes New Age buying all the influences and just gobbling up all those influences from every perimeter of our culture. Now the greatest and twelfth revolution, that's what it's about. The twelfth is the New Age Revolution. And a revolution is not just a change, it's a radical shift. See, change is every day. I keep all of my money in change. But you see, the New Age is the twelfth revolution 
in Western civilization in the last 300 years. And it's happened right smack dab in the United States. Now notice, it hasn't happened in India. India has never been Christian. It hasn't happened in Japan. Japan has never been Christian. It hasn't happened in India. India has never been Christian. Now, where has it happened? And then we're about ready to start. It's happened right in what most people... Do you remember in the 70s when they said this was the decade of the evangelical? Why the ink wasn't even dry from the time and Newsweek presses, for that was a lie. The only thing wrong with that claim is it was false. Its fundamental weakness is it wasn't true. Now, quickly, let me just read you some material about those definitions. We will take a look at New Age thinking. Now, that is not true because New Ages don't think. Because thinking is intentional. When you think, you say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm thinking. About what? Nothing. I'm just thinking. <laughs> no, you're not. Thinking is intentional. We are thinking about something. That's enough lesson for today. We will take a look at New Age thinking. I use the term New Age to refer to more or less generic theology, which undergirds such things as human potential movement, Human potential movement we'll talk about tomorrow in the holistic health business. Everybody has the potentiality to be a god. You see, when, when the atheist, lawyer, Madeline, Paddling Madeline, was in Denver, she told everybody there that there was no god. Billy Graham came to town within weeks and said, Jesus Christ is God. And then that dummy from California came to town and said, we're all God. See, they all talked about God, but they had radically different views about God. Radically different views about God. Now, here's what this means. Human potential movement, holistic health, westernized Asian mysticism, and many religious cults. See, cults is another category. See, we're talking about just New Age phenomena. There's 100 million, and there's 55 million cult members. See, that's over half of America aren't true blue restoration heritage people. Now, in a popularized form of postmodern thinking, which can be identified by such key terms as holism, let me spell that in case that's new, H-O-L-I-S-M, holism. See, because holistic health, that's what salvation has become to make you a whole person. Whole person? But you see, that's not what the Bible means by holiness. Can you imagine a psychological chart on Isaiah or John the Immerser, or Paul in jail, and said, well, his psychic charts are bad. <laughs> they what? Can you imagine Jeremiah walking around naked in the city? It'd be like going to the North American and disrobing at prime time television time at 7.30 when all biggies come to hear all ultimate truth. What would you do about that if someone came and said, uh, I'm Jeremiah and I'm back? <laughs> and nakedness was just, said, oh, I've seen that. I saw three naked girls before I saw you. <laughs> See, nothing impacts people anymore. We've been narcotized. A little bit at a time, new age just penetrates a little bit at a time. And after a while, well, what is that? I don't even know what it is. Holism, connectedness, synergy, but those are technical terms. Now, we come into contact with New Age views through those long weekend seminars. Oh, hear it on stress analysis. Preachers go to stress analysis. People in industry go to stress analysis on stress analysis. Now, if you're all stretched out on stress, you are a prime target for New Age. But if belonging to Jesus Christ is not a source of resolving stress, then you can't have a source from the Bible or from Jesus Christ of the resolution of any stress. See, anyone who can't take stress, get off of the line. Let people up who can manage stress. Now, TV talk shows, popular books, I mentioned Marilyn Ferguson's Aquarian Conspiracy. Now, the favorite book, the favorite book of Oprah, was a New Age book, Miracles. See, there isn't a popular, popular media voice that isn't New Age. Sounds like they're discussing things. It just sounds like that. It's full of sound and fury, signifying absolutely nothing.
whatsoever. Now, we will deal here especially with the concept of what a human being is in relationship to transformation and holiness. Now, if it's true that men are lost in sin, that only Jesus saves, we need grace. There's no place for grace in New Age. There's either no place for grace or everything's grace. See, whichever way is not acceptable with the Bible. There is no place for sin, so the problem is not sin. The problem is ignorance, and the problem is the fragmentation of your little psyches. So New Agers come along and to heal. Heal relationships, heal trouble in the church, heal trouble in the offices, heal trouble in industry. See, the second biggest taker for New Age, besides education, is a business. See, a Harvard MBA and a Stanford MBA are marketable any place in the world. And they're all going new age. Why? Because people are broken. But people that are broken aren't coming to the church. Because the church seems to be as broken as they are. Why, why would you go to broken people to get healed? Is there no one whole? Is there no whole church? Is there no whole preaching staff, teaching staff, elders and deacons, families. Is everyone neurotically sick? Show wholeness and we'll break the back of new age within a month. Show what it is to be a disciple of Jesus and that'll snap the power of all new age phenomena. Quickly, what we mean by that is a lot of things. Now, I want to tell you, Benjamin Cream, C-R-E-M-E, -E, is an important name in that. He's a self-appointed John the Baptist of a new age. And he lists four fundamental teachings. Now, some definitions. What is new age? Well, the new age isn't new at all. It's the ancient Gnostics. It's Hinduism. It's Buddhism. But that's too much to accept this quickly. Four fundamental themes in new age, the doctrines of new age, that Cream lists are these. One, one is God's pantheistic existence. What's that mean? Well, that means he's not personal, he's not the creator, he's not redeemer. God is everything. See, God's the world. God's you. God's the chair. God's the floor. God's the sky. Now, a second theme is man's immortality. Now, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say that all are immortal and that you do not need the saving power of Jesus Christ to be saved. But wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody was saved? That's universalism. See, when the church is at its weakest point in the history of the church, universalism breaks out. And the greatest resurgence of universalism in the history of the world, guess it, will take a poll is the world in which we live. If everybody's saved, then you don't need Jesus. If everybody's saved, you don't need grace. If everybody's saved, you don't need the church. See, if you're saved, you can be saved as a Hindu, as a Buddhist. See, the Bishop of Canterbury, not just a household name in our heritage, but the Bishop of Canterbury just a month ago says the only purpose the church has in sending missionaries is to dialogue with world religions. What? Now that's not new information. Some of us have heard that for hundreds of years. But you see, how much gall can the Bishop of Canterbury have to go on British BBC and say the only reason we send missionaries is to dialogue with them? You see, because if everybody's already saved, Clearly, it's ungracious to go bother them with the gospel of Christ. Now, doctrines, here's the third doctrine. Man's, man's immortal. Now, the third doctrine is continuing revelation from the messengers. One fundamental claim of New Age leaders is that we constantly get new insights into the nature of reality. And that's what people want. See, when you can't stand the present, you want to call on your prophets to tell you about the future. See, and the prophets are filled with chastisement when Israel did that. The New Testament is almost filled with passages regarding that phenomena. Now, claims to new, I don't mean the Book of Mormon. See, this is way past that kind of stuff. That's child's play. 
See, there's a lot of people claim further revelation. Your uncle does. See, I'm talking about the whole new age says we have a way to make men whole and to transform. The subtitle of Marilyn Ferguson's book is the personal and social transformation of the world. Well, if New Age can do that, then the church is obsolete. And the gospel is not only impotent, it's erroneous and useless. And there's no point being here at all. Now, don't forget that. Personal and cultural transformation. What all New Age themes say that without Christ and without the church and without forgiveness and without the cross, we can transform ourselves. That's what all human potential movements say. See, man has imminent power. All you have to do is give him the best psychic training for realizing that internal power. It's the power of positivistic thinking. Now, the fourth thing, man's ability to evolve into godhood. The very heart of New Age is that we're all gods. All gods. But see, most people, that just doesn't make much sense. Now another list, a useful book, two useful books from Doug Gruthius, Dutchman, you can tell, Gruthius, Doug's not Dutch, but Gruthius is. Inner varsity, you've got to get busy and study, see? The Bible first, and then some useful tools. Gruthius has two books, Understanding New Age and Confronting New Age. Now you could read that while driving home. Those are not complex books. If you can identify words, you can read those books. Now he lists, in both of his books, he lists 14 doctrines. These are the belief systems, and then you say, what are we going to do with New Age? Number one is an impersonal God. God is a force. Why, we saw that in the Jedi and the Return of the Jedi. Force. Why, it's energy. And I have a list of... 19 issues in contemporary science that opens up for the first time, see, without the happenings in molecular biology and in microscopic physics, you wouldn't have any possibility of new age, at least at the intellectual level, because ultimate reality is reducible, supposedly, to energy. Well, that seems religious to them, see? See, and very few people know that Mach, the great physicist at Vienna, see, became a Buddhist. Most people, now share this in the hall, people get excited and they'll, they'll get wide-eyed. Schrodinger, those of you that know anything about Schrodinger's equate wave mechanics, and to those who don't care about Schrodinger's wave mechanics, became a Hindu. See, some of the greatest minds in the world are turning to Eastern religions, just like they are at Los Alamos. They're not coming to Jesus. They're not coming to God. They're not coming to the Bible because they think the Bible's had enough time in this culture to do its work if it can do its work. Now, if you believe that, you have no business being here. I don't mean here in this meeting, but here in a Christian gathering. See, if the church were on fire other than preoccupied with itself, New Age wouldn't stand a chance. But the only power to combat new age is a church on fire with the truth. And if you, I've told you this before, but I tell students, if they can't do anything else, just catch fire and people come see you burn. <laughs> now, themes, I'll let you go about that. What are some things that we have to stop for tonight about what are we going to do? I gave some of you a little outline. I just want to talk about the Bible and then we'll just pack a load and walk home. Now, what are we going to do? We said just a little very elementary remarks about definitions. What do you mean by new age? Why new age is a certain mindset. What are some doctrines of new age? And you can identify them just like that. And every major media, can you imagine 1939 we had the Wizard of Oz and King Kong The four biggest cinemas in 1939 were kind of slow, you know, 25 frames per minute. Yeah, see, and that was a whole conversation. <laughs> see, the top media, the top media, the top media in 1989, 50 years after that, it's all occult, New Age. Every top 
Now, what's that mean? That means people like it. They go. That's what that means. All top movies are new age. See? And they're not. Not at all. Because they've got the know-how to bypass your mind to put you in a world life is but a dream. Why would you like that? Because the life that you think is real, you don't like. So if you could just have a better dream, you would like that. But that's not Christian. How's all this happen in my world? See, you didn't ask about your world. I asked, what am I not doing that this happens? Why work night and day, 25 hours a day, nine days a week to keep this from happening? And it goes right on and happens. But till the day I'm lowered into the tomb, it'll be confronted by me. If no preacher, no student listens, that's their problem. It won't be mine. If the church were being the church, we wouldn't have a problem of new age. We have it because churches aren't being the church. Now let's look at these things, what the Bible says, what are we going to do? I want to ask you to throw away all Sunday school literature but the Bible and turn that money into mission money. We need 30,000. 30,000 trained troops immediately. I didn't say 10 years from now. We have five years to prepare for the 21st century. Five. There's 12 years, but you can't have an army on the field when you enter the most complex, high-tech, megatrend world in the history of the world. And all the filters from the East keep coming because people get more empty and more empty and more empty. So church has to go touchy-touchy because people are so empty. I'm so filled, I can't imagine being empty. These things preach that God is the eternal, transcendent, personal creator and redeemer and preserver of the universe. Well, that sounds like theology. Yeah, the Bible's full of it. <laughs> Secondly, God is personal and an infinite person. He isn't the grass. He isn't beautiful trees. He isn't us. He is absolutely different from ourselves. We are the origin of God. Well, that sounds too heady for most people because they're hurting, they're broken. If people weren't broken, they would not be saturated with these influences. A third thing, humanity is fallen and sinful. The Bible says the first word in the Hebrew Bible, rah, for sin, it's translated evil means a violent revolt against order. Whatever sin is, it disorders people's lives. Is that not what we see? Whatever you talk about when you talk about sin. But sin, we don't have any North Americans on sin, do we? See, we needed two or three North Americans on sin before we had one on holiness. But you realize, now, humanity has fallen. There's no place for the fall and there's no place for sin in any New Age religion. A fourth thing, existence of evil necessitates God's action, not human potential movement. Evil is not merely ignorance. And evil is not something that can be rectified by the proper technique. See? Another theme, preach... The biblical view of linear history and each individual. Each individual is responsible to God. Each individual is responsible to God. But sometimes when the world gets its structures get so big, individuals are swept along and don't seem to be able to do anything about it. But you tell every person you have access to they're responsible. But see, evil is structured. We do not overcome evil structures by baptizing a thousand people a week in any community. Because structures are evil, not merely persons. Structures.
pleasures are evil. That's what the Bible says. Now another thing, preach. The physical world is real and good. The physical world is real and good. It is not fallen and nothing's wrong with it. If God hated matter, he wouldn't have created it. Seven, grace and the atoning work of Jesus on the cross and the empty tomb. See, let's preach the empty cross and the empty tomb. Not a full one, but an empty one. The work's finished. It's not for weekend seminars in how to overcome depression. Can you imagine Paul sitting chained in a Roman urinal said, well, I really got to have my counselor because I'm under strain. <laughs> that world was going to strain under Paul instead of Paul straining under it. Grace. Atonement. But see, if we haven't sinned, we just forgive ourselves and we're not guilty. Freud says that all guilt is socially caused. But Freud's wrong, like Marx, about every fundamental concept he ever set forth. I'll debate on the Harvard Yard about that. This is not the Harvard Yard and it's time to go Betty by for some of you. Some of you couldn't even wait. Now eight. Now watch this. The Bible says God is perfect. New Age says that we help perfect God. Well, these are different viewpoints is what I'm trying to say. A ninth thing that human language is rooted in reality. All Eastern thought, all forms of New Age tries to get us on the left hemisphere rather than the right hemisphere of the brain to bypass language and go symbolic and therefore you can project all of your meanings on symbols. The Bible interprets symbols by language. See, the Lord's table could mean lots of things. Every New Age group in the biblical world had something like a table like that. How do you know what the difference is? How it's interpreted. What it means is what the difference is. But if you're just looking at what we call communion, every mystery religion from the East had a communion table. But it didn't mean, and I know it's meaning only because I've been told what it means. See, it's like the flag. See, you're in crisis when the Supreme Court is nominalistic. Words mean what we say they mean. Well, Alice in Blunderland said that. Said Alice to the rabbit. What a word means is what I say it means. Well, they were in the same crisis in the 19th century when dear old Alice was conceived and born that we're in in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. This last thing. Praise God for this terminal remark. Jesus Christ is Lord when he is preached and all of his biblical power. I have a list of 45 views of Jesus that I was going to give you tonight. No, I'm not. 45 views from New Age groups about Jesus and the best he is is a guru. But see, that is not the one that was crucified. That's not the one that's not in the tomb. You can preach every spring if you want when the tulips come up that he's not there. But until that new life shows up in our lives and in the lives of the church, nobody in their right mind will believe it. See, that's why almost nothing happens when you go through the resurrection. You'd think every person getting ready to die would come to hear about the resurrection. But New Agers just say, well, well we're all going to make it. Well, that'd be wonderful if that were true, wouldn't it? New Age, it is the greatest single challenge. Now, contemporary science is, but that's too technical. The greatest single challenge to the church is new age. In the history of the church, I don't mean just now. We got to know the Bible and got to know what the themes are and be able to identify it just like that. If you can't do it, you'll need help. But surely every preacher and every elder and every deacon and every Sunday school teacher don't need help. God, will you pour out power while we've gathered that we'll recover the Bible in all of its power. Expose it. You don't need to worry about what's in it. You need to worry about exposing it. God will take care of it. Expose that word. And when young people are bamboozled by New Age themes at school, and oh, they are, from kindergarten up, they'll hear that and come and ask you about it.
and then you can tell them. But if they just think that's the normal thing, they'll never ask you a thing about it, and they will have assimilated it. Tomorrow, if any of you care, holistic health. And tomorrow, if no one cares, holistic health. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we pray for revival in the churches. We pray for recovery of the Word of God in all of its might, that the church alone has been created to confront these forces. And in the history of the church, when the church has been strong, these forces are absent or radically controlled. And when the church is weakest, these forces break out. God help each one of us here in this tiny gathering to understand what's the condition of the church for the greatest outbreak of New Age phenomena in the history of the world and the history of the church is in our world. God bless these people. Bless the preachers, the teachers, that we have time to respond to the 21st century. In the name and for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, who is not just one of us, but he is the creator, preserver, and redeemer of a sinful universe. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.